Hey there, in this video we're going to take a look at some of the most simple and basic key commands. Now using key commands really speeds up your workflow and it means that you can start being creative a lot quicker because you're not taking the time out to perform multiple operations with the mouse and the mouse button. Let's kick things off with the function keys. It's not as important now there's a mix console in the lower zone, but F3 probably was my most used key command other than record, stop and play. It will open up the mix console and close it again. F4 means I can get quick access to my VST connections, which is really handy if I'm adding any new devices. F5 is the media bay, which I don't use as much now that it's contained over in the right zone. F6 brings up my automation panel, so I can very quickly start automating or hide automation and suspend it. F12 will bring up the CPU workload, so it will show me what's going on with my computer and the hard drives. Next on my important list of key commands are the toolkits. So one is the arrow, two is the range tool, three is the scissors, so we can chop. Number four will allow us to glue parts together. Number five is the eraser, so we can remove different events. You'll notice that Control Z is undo and it's featuring a lot in this video. Number six is the zoom tool. We just zoom in on a particular area. Number seven is really important. This is the mute shortcut and I use it all the time, especially when I'm mixing. Number eight is the pencil tool. Number nine is the scrub tool. We can just simply use our mouse, press down and move to the right or to the left to scrub backwards and forwards in between audio. And of course it works on whatever we have highlighted or our mouse over the top of. I mentioned before that number one is the arrow key. And if we keep pressing number one, we can change the way the arrow key actually operates inside of Cubase. Another two of the most important key commands are G and H. I use G and H to zoom in and out almost constantly. Next up, we've got the Alt or Option key, which we can hold down and pick up on an event and drag it across to another place. And we've copied and pasted that event into a new spot. Playing in time is obviously really important when it comes to music production. And you can use the C key to turn the click track or metronome on and off. You can select events in the project window and then press the P button to have the locators automatically jump to the left and the right of the selected events. Then you can hit the cycle button or this key in the computer keypad and Cubase will loop the selection, meaning you can go backwards and forwards and continue to listen to the area or even record in that specific area. The I and O keys allow you to set punch in and punch out locators. And you can see when they're activated or deactivated in this little section down here in the lower zone. Another absolute must when it comes to key commands is the Q button. Now the Q button allows us to instantly quantize MIDI. So as soon as we've finished recording, providing we've got our quantize settings right, we can just hit Q and everything's automatically adjusted to be in time. When you're recording audio, it's important to be able to record prep or enable the track before you actually start recording. So the R button is the shortcut to record and enable an audio or even a MIDI track. Next up, we've got the snap to grid. So this means whatever we edit in the project window will snap onto whatever snap settings we have set. I use the L key constantly. All I need to do is select something, press the L button, and the locator will jump to the start of that event. So a really quick way of being able to get from A to B. Speaking of B, the B and N keys will allow us to jump backwards and forwards in between events. The M key will mute the whole entire channel. Really important if you just want to remove it from what you're actually listening to, or if you ever happen to have any audio feedback, that's the key you jump to straight away. Next up, we've got Z. Now, Z will zoom in and zoom out on whatever track that we have selected. It's really handy for editing when you've got a large track count. Lastly, we've got a couple of no-brainers. The space bar is play and stop. Zero is stop. Enter on the numeric keypad is play. Minus and plus on the numeric keypad will move us forwards and backwards throughout our project. Well, it'll move the locator anyway. And of course, the most important shortcut for any door is the record button, which is the asterisk on the numeric keypad. 
And finally, all of these key commands are completely customizable. So you can develop your own set of key commands by going up to the edit window and selecting the key command menu. Now you can find out what key commands relate to which key by either going through all the folders in the subfolders, or if you go over to the right hand side, you can simply enter a key in this section here and straight away the key command menu will tell you what is allocated to that key. So you can create your own set of key commands. The other thing you can do is save different key commands as presets. So you might have different key commands that you want to use for different types of applications. You can reset to the factory defaults and you can also select from a number of other door key commands. So if you're coming across and migrating from another software application, there is that option. Thanks for taking the time to stop by and check this video out. Please give us a thumbs up if you've learned something and subscribe to the Cubase YouTube channel for more videos just like this. I'll see you there.